The final report of the Senate inquiry into Australia Post and the unjust dismissal of Christine Holgate is a huge win for the Australian people. The Senate report exposed the secret Morrison government agenda to carve up and sell off pieces of Australia Post and has consequently derailed the privatisation plot. We now have a unique opportunity in history to create a new postal bank for the nation. I'm Robert Barwick of the Australian Citizens Party. The final report of the Senate inquiry echoes many of the demands the Citizens Party had made in the months prior to the Senate committee investigation. As we demanded, the Senate report calls for the Australia Post board to apologise to Ms Holgate. The Senate committee echoes our calls for the resignation of the chairman of Australia Post. As the Citizens Party had suggested, the Senate report calls for restructuring the board of Australia Post to make it more representative and not just stacked with party hacks. We were very pleased to see the Senate committee call for the immediate release of the secret Boston Consulting Group report on privatisation. But the most important one of all is Recommendation 14, which calls for requiring authorised deposit-taking institutions, ADIs, to allow Australia Post to process basic banking transactions for their customers as a condition of their licence, and that fees be levied on ADIs that are sufficient to cover the cost to post offices of providing this service. Why is this so important and what does it really mean? This recommendation implicitly endorses the bank at post deal spearheaded by Christine Holgate and in effect calls for it to be made permanent. It was the 2018 bank at post deal that got three of the four big banks and 70 smaller banks to reimburse Australia Post for services provided to the bank's customers. It was this deal that restored the family owned private licensed post offices, LPOs, to viability. But it also ruffled feathers in powerful banking circles. Three of the big four signed the deal reluctantly and likely only because they feared Christine Holgate might otherwise turn Australia Post into a bank that would break their monopoly. The Citizens Party and others have questioned whether the banks had a hand in targeting Christine Holgate for dismissal. In an amazing turnaround, the Senate report recommends that all banks now be required to allow Australia Post as a condition of their licence to process banking transactions for them and that they be required to reimburse Australia Post for doing so. This recommendation and the scathing Senate report more broadly has created a new political environment in which it is possible to go to the next step and create a national postal bank. The Citizens Party has drafted legislation to create a Commonwealth Postal Savings Bank. Many governments around the world license their post offices to carry out banking transactions. Some of the most successful, like Japan Post, made their postal system into a full-fledged savings bank. A Commonwealth Postal Savings Bank would have many benefits. It would end the destructive banking monopoly of the big four provide a safe place for deposits, offer convenient services to rural communities and contribute to Australian national economic development. Please sign our petition calling for a national savings bank. We must strike while the iron is hot and take advantage of this important moment in history. The privatisers and big four banking circles are off balance and exposed. Help us take advantage of this unique opportunity. Please sign our petition and join the fight.